If you're just starting up a handmade jewelry business, you are probably feeling a little overwhelmed and maybe you're wondering how you will make your jewelry shop stand out from all the other handmade jewelry shops that are on Etsy. At first glance, it seems like there's so many competitors and jewelry makers out there and you might wonder how you can even compete and be successful against so many of them. The good news is you absolutely can compete and you absolutely can be successful. Let's dive in. Bonjour, my name is Deb and I'm the founder of Tizit.co, a membership community for makers and handmade shop owners just like your fabulous self. You can learn more about our community Tizit HQ via the link below this video. But for now, let's jump straight into today's conversation, how to start a handmade jewelry business and sell on Etsy. Now, before we start going through the topics of this video, I want you to know that I have all sorts of videos to get you started, not just this jewelry one. Most of the videos that I have on this channel apply to opening a jewelry business because they all cover the things that you need to know to sell any handmade products, including handmade jewelry. So you will want to watch those videos to learn how to build your business from setting it up to branding to marketing and watch this one to get additional information pertaining specifically to jewelry. This video is going to focus on the small details that make selling handmade jewelry a little different and that you really want to be aware of and focus on if you sell jewelry versus something else. The first thing I recommend you do before anything else is download the free makers roadmap guide. It will take you from picking a business model to pricing your jewelry, show you how to create uh, successful product collections and launch your shop and everything after that, such as marketing and growing your business. Once you have your strategy all mapped out, this video will help you dial in on the particularities of selling jewelry. In addition to my advice, you'll also hear some great advice from some of our HQ members who are successful jewelry makers and sellers. Okay. Okay, let's start with a really common question I hear. Is there too much competition to make it? My short answer is yes and no. And what I mean by that is yes, there are a lot of other sellers, but no, because it's still possible to stand out. I actually have a video about this called how to make your shop stand out from the handmade or Etsy crowd that will guide you through the details so you are aware of all the ways you can help your shop stand out. And if you're really worried about competition, I'll also link to another video about how to stop worrying about your handmade business competition so that you can grow your shop instead. I'll link both those videos below. What you really need to remember about competition though is that it really comes down to not doing what everyone else is doing. So my next bit of advice would be to create jewelry with your own unique style. Actually Brie, TZHQ member and the owner of Two Silver Moons, which has had around 5,000 sales, says it really well. The next bit of advice would be to do unique work. It's difficult to compete by selling items similar to those sold by many other stores. Competing by price is pretty much impossible on Etsy, which actually brings us to our first tip, which is find your jewelry aesthetic. Before we dive in your jewelry design style though, I want to mention quickly one somewhat obvious but often missed piece of advice, which is make quality jewelry. Brie of Two Silver Moons also emphasized this very important point. I would suggest getting a really good foundation in jewelry making skills. I have seen a lot of badly made jewelry on Etsy and those stores do not survive long. And talking about surviving, I have seen people do some scary stuff that is dangerous to their health. So especially for metalsmith, getting a good foundation is important for safety as well. Great pawn spray. When you sell handmade jewelry, you want to offer a consistent look and style across your products and collection. It's okay to experiment with different looks behind the scenes, and it's okay to change your style and pivot your shop style if you want to focus on a different niche. But you want to avoid having your shop be a display of all the different styles that you're experimenting with. You want to find your style and build your business around it. Even if you're selling one of a kind jewelry, you want it to be all linked together by the same style or theme. For example, let's say you sold a certain style of jewelry for a little while and then you discover that you have a different style that's emerging and you want to move your shop more in that direction. That is okay. You never want to stop being creative but when you are trying out this new style you don't want to have your shop be a display of all of your old jewelry and random pieces of this and new style of that and things that you're trying out. Figure out your new design aesthetic before switching your shop over. Here's a great example of a shop moving to a new style over time from Tanya, creator and owner of You Make My Clay. Tanya is a TZHQ member also who started a business making clay floral jewelry. But over time, she found herself getting creatively stuck and was losing her enthusiasm for a shop. Tanya told me that when she first started a handmade business, 
she researched different options and chose something she thought others were looking for and would like elegant vintage and nature inspired jewelry the opening of the business went well but when it came time to design her next collection she struggled to come up with ideas then she started an instagram account and she would sit and struggle to come up with captions because the jewelry she was making was something that others loved but not something she really connected with herself her enthusiasm started to ebb away and tanya knew from the little alarm bells going off in her head that something needed to change in the meantime tanya had been making behind the scene cute tiny jewelry pieces focusing on animals as gift for her family and friends people started asking if she sold them and this gave her an idea to open a second shop to try selling them just to see what would happen and a lot happened she opened a new business uh, you make my clay and soon it had quadrupled the sales of her original business long story short she closed up the original one and switched to making and selling products that she enjoys and and is passionate about she's never at a loss for product ideas or post captions they just flow out and i just love the story because it showcases how important it is to let your business change and grow over time and to listen to your creative gut Tanya experimented with her idea on the side, so it was doing really well, it was well received, and so she transitioned her business to this new theme. And she's a wonderful example of having a handmade business that you feel a real connection with. She offered this bit of advice to new shop owners. Let me read it to you. Unless you are only going to be manufacturing your pieces while someone else handles all the marketing and promotion, I can't stress enough how important it is to really know your style and stick to it. I went from drawing a blank every time I tried to come up with a new design to being able to create a huge list of ideas for future collections that looks like a shopping list for a wedding banquet. Where my knowledge of vintage fashion was very limited and I'd sweat bucket loads over a blank Instagram image description, I could go on for days about the extraordinary talents of a seemingly lackluster animal or be enthused and inspired by the eagerness of an owner talking about a beloved pet. And while I don't discourage anyone from checking out trends, I myself benefited from the sloth boom. Make sure it's something you won't tire of or struggle to understand. You will need that love when you're in the middle of the Christmas rush season and you're making the same pair of your bestseller earrings for the 4,000 times. <laughs> you will also need the enthusiasm when you're creating regular content for your Instagram, Facebook, or Pinterest account. Fake it till you make it. It won't work for the long-term commitment that is a small business. This is excellent advice and thank you so much Tanya for sharing your story. Now once you choose the style and aesthetic that you want to focus on you will also want to define your niche which is point number two. Everyone talks about niching down but what does it really mean? It's similar to style but it's a bit different so let's look at our jewelry market as an example. When you niche down in this market you're finding your niche inside of the jewelry market because the jewelry market is huge so niching down is the way you stand out. It's also the way you avoid competition. You reduce the competition by selling to a sub market inside of a jewelry niche. Your niche becomes an important way in which you can actually stand out. So this is more important than in any other craft niche because jewelry is such a broad category and has such a high amount of competition. Let me show you a few examples. First, let's take a look at these pictures from a shop called Bokaru Blink, created by TZHQ member Yelena. When you look on Yelena's website, you can see that she's very clear on who she's selling jewelry for. If you're shopping and see her pictures, you'll know right away if her jewelry is your style because she has created a niche selling these absolutely lovely Western jewelry styles with a cowgirl flair. And the thing is, contrary to what you might think, niching down and being very specific about what you're selling and for who you create your products doesn't actually push people who don't perfectly fit that description away. Seriously, for example, I look at that jewelry and I want to go buy myself one of those hats and outfits so that I can buy a jewelry and dress like the woman in the pictures. Niching down doesn't push customers away, it attracts more. Now let's look at a completely different jewelry business checking out these pictures from Tanya's you make my clay shop that we just talked about these are so darn cute as I scroll down the product page I keep thinking oh my gosh I want that one and wait I want that one too you can literally feel how much fun she has making these products now both Tanya and Yelena are handmade jewelry shop owners but can you see that they don't compete with each other not even one bit they each niche down and that's why Tanya sells animal clay jewelry Yelena is selling co-girl jewelry they each appeal to a very distinct 
content and very different buyer. So when I asked Yelena what her advice would be to jewelry shop owners that were just starting out, she said exactly what we've just talked about. Research and find your niche. Yelena knows just how successful you can be if you can take the time to do your homework before opening your shop to find a niche that is a good match for your passion and your skills. I'm going to be introducing you to more TZHQ jewelry shop owners in this video and you will see they also have their own niche, which is a super important part of their success. The moment you niche down, you attract better customers who are going to be more attracted to your products. So you reduce your competition and you increase your sales. Okay, let's move on to our next point, creating collections. After you niche down, you want to create collection within your niche. These collections may have different price points. Some may be upsells and others may be in a lower price range, but each will still have a cohesive look and style that fits within the niche you're selling in. I won't go into too many details here, but I have a video that walks you through exactly how to plan your handmade product line that you can watch next. And I'll add the link down below this video as well. Once you have your product line all planned out, you're ready to think about branding. So once you know your niche and the aesthetic and style that you're going for, you need to communicate that effectively to the world so that you can attract the right customers. And that's essentially what branding does for you. Now, when you think about branding, you're going to start thinking about your business name and you're going to want to put it on a business card. And while these two things are important, I want to warn you here that it's easy to get stuck deciding on a business name and hold up opening your shop because you're wanting to get, you know, the perfect business name decided on before you order your business cards, for example. So make sure to don't get too caught up here in this trap of procrastinating on finding your name for too long. It's easy enough to change your name later. So just pick one and move on. And unless you're selling at craft fairs, you really don't need business cards right off the bat. You're going to be fine without them. So I guess I just want you to encourage you not to worry too much about that. If you need some help deciding what to name your business, I actually have a video that talks more about choosing a business name called how to name your craft business or Etsy shop. This video will help you choose your name and move on to branding, which is very, very important. When you're ready to work on branding for your business, I have two very important resources for you. The first is a new video called Eight Steps for Branding Your Handmade Business, which will give you a great overview of how to brand your handmade business. And better yet, I have an entire course about how to create an irresistible brand into ZHQ if you prefer to have step-by-step -step instructions to guide you through the branding process. Now let's talk a bit about the importance of branding here. Branding is much more than your name and the colors of your logo. It's the experience and the emotions that you make someone feel so much so that they want to purchase your product to keep feeling this way and to bring that feeling into their life. So I want to show you a few TZHQ members that do a wonderful job at this. First is Prachi, creator and owner of Prachi Bohemian Art. As you can see, Prachi makes these absolutely amazing macrame earrings. But what I want to show you today is not just a beautiful beautiful earrings, but something else she's doing over on her website. Prachi also launched a blog called the Slow Fashion Blog, and what she's selling in this blog is a lifestyle. In each blog article, she's talking about outfits, and as you can see in the picture, she has these incredible photos of coordinated outfits complemented by her jewelry in a very lovely flat lay arrangement that makes you want to jump into the picture and put all of this on. These photos help people get to know a brand and a brand is not just a jewelry, it's the feeling that women have when they experience her shop and her blog. It's how they imagine themselves feeling when they wear her pieces, how they can picture themselves in those images. A whole brand conveys a certain feel to the shopper. It's not just the color palette and the logo. It's what she shares and talks about, what she communicates to her potential customers. A brand makes women feel confident and strong. It's much more than just jewelry. No one buys jewelry just because they love jewelry. It runs deeper. Why do they love jewelry and the specific type of jewelry that you're making? Because it makes them feel something. And that's why your brand needs to sell to them. That's what branding is. It's this experience that you want to recreate for your potential customers. And it's so very important, so much more than your name, the colors in your color palette and all of that. So the question you want to ask yourself is, what is the world I'm building for my customers? And how how do I make them feel so that they are wanting to buy my products to keep feeling this way. Now let's move on to our final point, pricing. Another really common question people ask about selling handmade jewelry is, is it profitable? 
And the simple answer is yes, if you make it so. <laughs> so of course, if you underprice your products, it won't be, but absolutely yes, if you price your product correctly. There definitely are enough people in the world willing to buy your jewelry at a price that would make you a profit and a nice healthy margin so that you can run a successful and profitable business. But if you underprice your product, there is nothing anyone can do to help you. Yelena of Bokaro Bling had some good advice about pricing. Make sure you price your products properly for both wholesale and retail. You might not want to sell wholesale in the moment, but knowing your costs, calculating the wholesale price and basing your retail price on that would warranty you're not working for peanuts or even worse, losing money. And she's absolutely spot on. A lot of people skip the wholesale price because they think they're not going to sell wholesale and then they end up selling retail at wholesale prices. That severely undercuts your potential to actually make your business profitable. Pricing is an extremely important thing to be sure that you do right. And I've created a TZHU course called the Handmade Pricing Masterclass that walks you through each step of the pricing process, workbooks and all, <laughs> to be sure that you set your prices to maximize profit and demand. I'll put the link down below if you want to learn more about that. One final point about pricing, when it comes to pricing jewelry, it's even more important than in any other niche that you look at perceived value before setting a price for your products. The perceived value of your products determines who wants to buy your product and what they are willing to pay for it. It's the key to selling more jewelry pieces at higher prices. If you're unclear about what perceived value is, you can learn more about perceived value in my video called What Are Handmade Products Really Worth? And I'll put the link down below for you again. I know we've covered a lot of stuff today and your head might be spinning a little. So if you want step-by-step -step help, TZHQ is a course for each of these important points, pricing, branding, product collection, and everything else in between. Plus all you need to grow and you know to market your shop after that. It's SEO, Instagram, Pinterest. We have a course for each of these topics. So click the link below to learn more about becoming an HQ member. And also I will have linked all these lovely resources that I uh, mentioned in this video below. So make sure that you go and check out those links, click subscribe. And until next time, au revoir.